As we talked about in the opening statement, it sure would be nice if we could shift some of our <clears throat> technological expertise expertise from the technologies of war to the technologies of uh, an international cooperative space development and exploration and colonization venture. Actually, if you want to listen to this interview. Yeah, let's do it. I'd love, love to listen to this. To ship a spacecraft to Florida for flight um, and end up a week later operating on the moon, I declare that a success. However, I do have to tell you that uh, we don't believe we're in the correct attitude on the surface of the moon uh, yet again. Uh, I don't have all the data yet to say exactly where, what the attitude of the vehicle is. We're collecting photos now and downlinking those. And we're going to get a picture from the Lunar Reconnaissance uh, Orbiter camera from above, from orbit, and we'll confirm that over the coming days. So if we can figure out the orientation correctly with imagery, we can then develop a power profile, like I said, and then result in a series of priorities in the science and technology list that would allow us to capture some mission objectives uh, for the mission. Turn on the drill, uh, turn on the mass spectrometers, for example, sniff for uh, water as, as we vent the LOX tank, for example, with the uh, Hungarian sensor, the Pooley space sensor, or with M Solo, the, the, the STMD Prime 1 drill package mass spectrometer. Uh, Nokia, we know we can talk uh, on Nokia radios uh, on today. So there's there's quite a number of objectives that we can meet. We just have to lay that out here over the coming shifts. Yeah, he listed some of the uh, achievements, which will all yield great data and learning lessons. I mean, I just remember back to the early days of Mercury and the space programs in the U.S. There were multiple failures, rockets exploding on the launch pads that I mean, I think the first four or five attempts ended in failure, but uh, we persisted and eventually were successful.